help me affirm the theme of the day, succession part three. But I want you to yell to the rafters, no more cycles. I want you to yell to the rooftop today. Right where you are, no more cycles. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whatever you've been going through in 2020 and one, shout to the adversary and say no more cycles. Hallelujah. Won't you pray with me real quick? Gracious and eternal God, we love you today. We thank you for the outpouring of your anointing. We thank you, Lord God, for the simplicity of your word. Hide us behind the cross, Lord God. Send your anointing that makes teaching and preaching easy. That when we leave this place, God, that we would know that there will be no more cycles in our life. But God, we are walking in succession and completing those things, God, that you have promised to us. In Jesus' name, let us say amen. You may be seated in the great presence of our Lord. As we begin to close out and unify and align ourselves spiritually and mentally for our noun and in preparation of respect to what God is unveiling and divulging by his spirit for our new and upcoming year. Tell somebody I got myself in a position that not only can God unveil to me, but he can divulge to me. That simply means there are some things that God is going to show me. And then there are some things that God is going to communicate to me. Concerning my now, because 2020 and one is not over. You know how we do oftentimes, soon as we get to December, we start making New Year proclamations and resolutions. But I'm here to tell you that God is not through blessing you in this year yet. Tell somebody, say, don't look too far ahead because the year is not over yet and I believe that after we've been tried in this year that there is still an anticipation that in the next few days that God is going to bless me unequivocally and what I've been waiting for God to do that he is more than able to perform can I just park pause and prophesy to somebody that the job you've been waiting on you gonna get it in 2021 that you can walk in your victory in 2022 can I just tell somebody I know holiday season is coming but the underwriter will not be on vacation that your mortgage will go through before the year is out I'm just here to tell you this morning that what you have been waiting for I know the year is getting ready to turn but God said I'm gonna make good in this year what I promised you I know you're already looking to the new year but God is going to divulge something by his spirit into your spirit that's going to make you break out in a praise glory to God shout hallelujah and as mother Hargrove said it will be your password into your paradise Glory to God. Tell somebody God is not through with me in this year. It is essential that our context of discourse, don't push me, son. It is essential that our context of discord surrounding our word of passage throw proper light on its meaning, formatively explaining what context mean. Somebody say discourse surrounding a word of passage to throw proper light on its meaning. Meaning God is saying something to us that he wants us to comprehend that we might be able to ascend to the heel of the Lord. Have you ever heard a word in God and yet you are waiting for the understanding and the comprehension of it? 
God is saying, I'm getting ready, Brother Al, to throw proper light on what you've been dealing with and what he's been speaking to you. Have you ever been there in your life before where you just simply ask God why? Well, God is saying, I'm getting ready to answer the whys in your life in this year. Come on, son, that you might be able to walk in the succession that he has promised you for next year. Come on, help me affirm the message today. Shall no more cycles. Glory to God. It's paramount we examine the interrelated conditions of our faith our obedience and unity in the light of God's word that we'll stop grappling with but be able to grasp. Grappling means we keep contending to believe and be fully persuaded that what God has promised he is able to do. Tell your adversary, say, my grappling time is over. You have worn me out for the last evening. You have kept me up all night wearing. Is God going to do it? will God do it? I'm here to tell somebody this morning that God is speaking to your spirit that you can grab hold that the promises of God are yea and amen. Like Jacob glory. Jacob wrestled with the angel but then at one point in his life Jacob just said Lord however you bless me. Tell somebody say glory. Say I'm getting ready to the grabs what God has for me. Y'all be seated. Don't push me. Glory to God. God is getting ready to throw light by his word that we might grasp the value of succession. <laughs> For those who haven't tuned in the last three weeks, let me bring you up to date. In the previous weeks, the Holy Spirit has centralized our sermons around Abraham, Sarah, and the first family of faith. We shout stuff out in the church and we put certain names on the pastor, his wife, and his children. We often call them the first family. But if we are going to be correct in our discourse or examination of what the first family ought to comprise of, say it has to be a family of faith. And whenever you are a family of faith, if you are in the first position by divine covenant and right, that means God's going to press you behind limits first. Don't you ever have to question if you need to pray for the first family because God is going to press them to a place that everybody that is after them might be blessed at the same level. That's just a footnote in an Amashia and the sidebar. Glory to God. We can't preach Abraham as the first family and not have our mind focused on Jesus. The gospel according to St. John 8 and 58 reads, Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you before Abraham was, I am. So we can talk about Abraham's life. We can talk about him contending in his conviction for the faith. But without Jesus, there is no Abraham. Glory to God. Because God made a promise when he could not swear by none greater, he swore by himself. I'm just here to tell you this morning that before this year is out, what you have believed in God for, it was sealed in the covenant promise that God cannot lie. Tell your neighbor, say, yes, Abraham is wonderful. But before Abraham was Jesus, is when Abraham just like his grandson uh, Jacob was exasperated and lets us know that a theophany a man Melchizedek appeared to him where are you going with this brother Bishop I'm just here to tell you before the year is out God is going to refresh revitalize and restore whatever you think you have lost can somebody shout I'm about to get it all back Hallelujah, Luke gives us insight 
to the extent of how blessed the family of faith was then and in our modern age a man acts luke writes this acts 3 22 and 23 for moses truly said unto the fathers a prophet shall the lord your god raise up unto you and of your brethren like unto me him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed. Tell your neighbor, say, it's in my mouth. I've been trusting God. I've been leaving God. And I understand, I comprehend that God has risen up Jesus from the grave that I might be able to walk in the promises of God, which are yea and amen. Let me go a little further, Sister Ashley, and what Acts 3 tells us in 24 through 26 is say yea and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these days. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God swear unto Abraham saying and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Tell your neighbor say I understand whose seed I am in faith. I understand my covenantal promise and my covenantal right because I am the seed of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Can you just throw up your hands and say, I understand that I'm a blessed in the city, that I'm blessed in the field, that I'm blessed in storehouse, that I'm blessed in measure. I'm blessed going out and I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed when I feel like I'm up. I'm blessed when I feel like I'm down. I'm blessed when I feel like my life is in turmoil and a whirlwind. Tell your neighbor, say, I am the seed of Jesus Christ, the father of Abraham, and I'm blessed all the days of my life. Glory to God. Can I go a little bit deeper? Luke talk about from the time of Samuel but Abraham himself was pronounced to be a prophet of God. Genesis 20 and 7. Look at how blessed you are right here because you are the seed of Abraham. Glory to God and the brother and the seed of Jesus Christ. Genesis 20 and 7 reads, Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet and he shall pray for thee and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. God, amen, a sidebar here and a footnote. God lets Abraham know that he has the power of life and death in his tongue. We are the children of the prophets. And I don't want to talk about the prophet as in divine office of the church. But I want to talk about being the children of the prophets. Glory to God. Jesus being the head prophet. That whatever he speaks through us shall come to pass. Can you open up your mouth and tell somebody see this situation that look like is dying in my life I'm getting ready to speak life over it don't you realize that the word of God it is nigh even in your mouth I'm getting ready to speak life over my family I'm speaking life over my ministry speaking life over my business speaking life over my body glory to God I feel a hoop but I gotta stay with the seminary studies for a minute glory to god we started week number one succession god the title amen and the subtitle god spoke to us about the man the mantle the spirit and the mission glory to god in his mystery god calling the man by faith and through faith he would procreate nations unto god himself in christ jesus 
after man attempted in chapter 11 to build a city and a tower to make a name for himself. Elder Carling, watch this. In Genesis 11, 3 through 5, and they said one to another, the people down in Shinar, it said, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly or throughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name. Glory to God. The people trying to make their self a name outside of God. And as we talked about the man, the mantle, the spirit, and the mission, one of the first things God said to Abraham he said and I will make your name great y'all not going to help me in here I'm here to tell you this morning Pastor James that there is a word spoken over your life that if you would trust God that God will make your name great I want to tell everybody that's watching on YouTube this morning we don't have to build our own city but God made a covenant with God all by himself that if we will walk with him in faith and love the Lord God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and with all of our soul, that God would do something so extraordinary. Can you just shout to the rafters, he shall make your name great. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Succession part two. The Lord spoke to us about generational consciousness and a family unified. Some might say a family unified. Today we are going to throw some light from a perspective. Tell your neighbor that's going to inspire your faith. That's going to stir up your gifts. That's going to raise us out of dead works. Somebody say no more cycles. Come on, come on, come on, come on, brother Al. Somebody just shout no more cycles. Every time I feel that God is taking me to another level. Anybody ever feel they had to take a step down? I'm here to prophesy over you this morning that not only is God going to cause succession in your life, but God is going to bring a people around you that's going to want you to succeed because every now and then we become a product of our environment. The people we hang out with, every now and then people see the favor and the blessings of God on your life and they want to trip you up but I'm here to let you know this morning that before this year is out God's going to give you some people that's going to wish you good success God's going to put some people in your life that every time you get discouraged they are going to encourage you God is going to put some people in your life to help you get rid of the cycles of confusion the cycles of debt the cycles of unbelief the cycles of poverty oh God I hear you Holy Spirit come on open up your mouth and just help affirm the intent of the message today shall no more cycles 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 in my marriage no more cycles in my finances no more cycles in my church attendance no more cycles in my favor glory to God let's go to seminary bishop views cycle a course of series of events or operations that recur regularly and usually lead back to the starting point what is a cycle bishop i'm glad you asked i'm gonna tell you again 
a course or series. It's a course. It's a trajectory. It is something that you have been set on. And the thing that we don't comprehend about cycles, that cycles was premeditated before we was ever born. But what I love about the intentions of God, that before they ever went to Shinar and said, let us make a name for ourselves, Abraham was already thought of. And before Abraham was thought of, Jesus was already is. I'm just here to simply tell you that everything that has thrown you off course in your life, that there is a course correction called giving your life to Christ. And the day you give your life to Jesus, it sets a new trajectory. It sets a plethora of blessings. It puts you on the course that you will never have to repeat step down or go through what you went through before and every time glory a situation come in your mind tell your neighbor say I step from carnal into spiritual and he gives me a mind called the mind of Jesus and as far back as David could think David said Pastor James when I look back over my life thou God God has been from everlasting to everlasting. I know I am the seed of Abraham, but my relationship and my reality has went beyond Abraham. I know that Jesus is the Lord of Lords. I know that Jesus is the King of Kings. I hear him in the cool of the day. I can take God and who he is all the way back to the let there be and just like father spoke then he is still speaking now let me go back to school cycle succession the right of a person or line for success somebody say succession the right of a person or line for success. Glory to God. Romans says something that is really important. If we're going to look at us being children of the prophets, and God said, amen, to Israel that I would raise up a prophet that is like unto Moses, meaning even greater than Moses. He would raise up Jesus Christ, who would be our deliverer and put the word of faith nigh in our mouth. I want to tell us something this morning, that every time you look like you're ready to have a reoccurring situation, speak new beginnings. That's your rhema for now to the end of the year. Don't you wait, glory, to 1259-5959 to cross over into a new beginning. But whenever it looks like a situation or a circumstance is about to repeat, shut the devil's mouth and say new beginning. Can somebody shout with me this morning? New beginnings. New beginnings. Romans 3 and 1 through 4 reads, Pastor James, what advantage then have the Jew? Or what profit is there in circumcision, which means covenant? We can't come to the commonwealth of the kingdom. We cannot come into the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ and feel like we are the victims. Because we are at a distinct advantage over those that don't know the grace that we walk in. Yes, my birth situation might look like it's been a puzzle conundrum. But I'm here to let you know he told Jeremiah that before you ever entered into your mother's womb, I already knew you. Glory to God. Can somebody just shout this morning that before the puzzle of my life was ever announced on earth that God had already blessed me in a heavenly place in Christ Jesus. I'm going to take my time. Verse 2 says, Romans 3, 
much every way chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? That's why God said he's getting ready to give you some new people around you that want you to succeed. Because some of us know that success is over our life. But because of the doubt or the lack of faith or some, the lack of encouragement, the lack of forward vision and thinking, we have been stuck going in a circle. But I want the devil to know this morning that even though there's doubters around us, it does not stop the faith of God from not being effective. Tell somebody I got an anointing that keeps inspiring my faith. You got an anointing that is delivering you from dead works. You got an anointing that God keeps welling up a word that you shall live, Mother heart grow and not die and the life source of our strength is that we declare the works of the Lord we don't have life without substance and emission now it ties all back to part one the man the mantle the mystic the spirit and the mission tell your neighbor say I'm on a mission right now I'm on a mission between now and the end of the year to capture everything that I didn't get done in the last 11 and a half months of the year. I'm on a mission right now to pray more fervently than I ever prayed before. I'm not waiting to watch and I serve it. I believe that the spirit of the living God has inspired us in this now season that we can tread on lions. We can walk on scorpions. I believe that God in Anamashia in this now season will save your children. Will bring them to the foot of the cross. I believe that you are a child of the prophet. And when the spirit of God raise up on you, you can prophesy your way out. Tell your neighbor I understand we got set prophets in the house of God but I am a child of the prophets and Jesus said that the word of God is not even in my mouth you won't succeed without your word oh brother Al I got some more work to do I got some more work to do. For what if some did not believe? Should their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sin and might have overcome when thou art judged. Somebody say, I'm going somewhere. Glory to God. I'm going somewhere. Romans, I'm just getting ready to let you know who you are and the power of life and death that rest in your mouth. Somebody say, Romans 10, 8 through 11 reads, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, look at your neighbor and say, the scripture saith. Come on, come on, look at him and say, the scripture saith, which means the word of God that is in my my mouth say whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed oh bless the name of the Lord Jesus if you got enough power to confess your salvation then you got enough power to confess 
to confess your household being saved. I'm going somewhere, Mother Hargrove. I'm just laying the track work that we can stop having reoccurring issues in my life. Because if you believe that you spoke the word in faith and God came into your heart, then you got to have enough faith in the word that you spoke then to even speak it now. That what God has promised, he is able to deliver. Tell somebody, say, I got a word that's getting ready to stop the cycles in my life. You got a word that is in your heart that's getting ready to emanate out of your mouth that's going to make the adversary scatter seven ways. You got a word that has been spoken down the lineage of the line of the prophets that blessing surely he's going to bless you. I don't know who I'm talking to in here. Maybe God is only preaching to me because the Bible says that the laborer is the first partaker of the fruit. Somebody shout feed me Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. You got Zoe life inside of you. You got power over life and death inside of you. You got the power to call those things that are not. It takes a word to be able to call. Glory to God. Tell somebody, say, I've been called that I can make a call. I've been called that I can make a call. I've been called that I can make a call. And the call that I'm making this morning is no more cycles. You've been called to make a call. God called Abraham and he said, in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. That means, baby, that my plan will never run out. My plan will never be overcharged. I already got an international plan. I got a domestic plan. I got Wi-Fi plan. I got text messaging. My plan is an unlimited plan because Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. I'm eternal. Oh, help me, Jesus. Mother Hargrove, you was in the spirit. What is your password? Somebody say eternal. What is your plan? Somebody say eternal. What is God doing in your life? Hallelujah. The scripture in Romans is what we must declare, what we most declare in prayer as we offer our life and heart to our Lord. Once we speak the word of life in faith, we enter into Zoe life. What is the adversary trying to take from us? St. John 10 and 10 says, the thief cometh yet but not to steal, kill, and destroy. He tries to keep reoccurring situations in our life. Family came together on Thanksgiving. They didn't fell out before Christmas. The devil is a liar. We are a unified family. Family come together for Christmas to exchange gifts. Then they fall out before New Year's Day. Tell your neighbor, God God is making the adjustment right now. No more cycles because the adversary didn't realize that when I pronounce the word of faith that I entered into Zoe life, life more abundantly, life with succession, life that not only am I blessed, but my seed is blessed. I feel like having church now. Tell somebody, say for every cycle cycle there is a blessing for every setback it's been a setup for every step backwards I hear the Lord 
say the reaper is going to overtake the sower, which means God in his lowly life plan is about to wrestle you down. No more moving every three years. No more landlord. You're going into ownership. No more. Glory to God. Go into the prison to get your children out. Tell your neighbor, no more cycles. It's been broke. It's been destroyed. Because I got a word that is not even in my mouth and in my heart. Should the lack of faith of some throughout the belief and the power of what God has spoken. Somebody say succession is deemed over my life. Succession is deemed over my family. Glory to God. Deuteronomy 30 verses 14 through 16 reads, But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day, not January 1. Can somebody say this day? Not 2022. Can we say this day? I have set before thee this day life and good. God doesn't say life and death. He says life and good. Hallelujah. And this is why we have to understand the interrelations between our word, our faith, and our promise. Because God says no more cycles. I didn't say life and death. I said life and death. Somebody say succession is about the good life of God. And then he says, and death and evil. He tells Brother Abraham, or he tells Abimelech that Abraham is a prophet. And that if you don't restore his wife, and, and if you don't restore her, surely you would die. But look what Brother Abraham does. In the midst, a man of his disparaging situation, he prays for the king and restoration comes. What are you saying brother bishop? Don't you worry about the folk who abused you because their life is in your mouth. Don't you, now my see, don't you worry about who took advantage of you because their blessings is in your mouth. Can I go deeper? Come on, God, put your weight on it. Put your weight on it. Put your weight on it. Verse 16 says, Deuteronomy 30 and 16, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest. This is profound to me because God makes a covenant with Israel with the same intent that he speaks to us in Romans that if we would confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. Somebody say that sounds like succession to me. That sounds like that we are the seed of Abraham. That sounds like God took the then and pronounced a contemporary blessing upon even us that came to the household of faith. You can't discredit what God has put in my mouth. Open up your mouth today and say devil though you try me you still can't discredit that we're coming out and we're coming out all right you can try me but you can't stop me tell somebody I'm not going backwards this year 
Numbers 11 and 29. Look at an Amashia. Somebody say, it's on me. It's on me. It's on me. It's on me. Come on. You are the family of Jesus. Say, it's on me. Pastor Carleen, it's on me. I know the kids might get upset. Here she go again. But you better tell those babies, it's on me. And because it's on me, it's on you too. And that's why every time they're about to get in trouble, they shout Jesus. That's why every time they're about to get in trouble, they shout daddy or mommy because they understand what's on them. Shout to your neighbor. Say, this thing is on me. The prophetic word is in me. And when I open my mouth, I expect stuff to live. When I open my mouth, I expect the devil to be put to death. When you open your mouth, you better expect God to show up on your behalf. When you open your mouth, you know the cycles are over. Glory to God. When you open your mouth, hallelujah. Glory. Now, Mashiach, if you didn't know, let the adversary know that I am a child of the prophets. If you thought Samuel was something, you better look at the Christ generation because the Bible says that God spoke to our fathers through the prophets in sundry times. If you thought Elijah was bad, you better check out the Jesus generation. If you thought he can call down fire, you better check out the fire of the Holy Spirit. If you thought that Elijah could outrun Ahab's chariot, you better check out the praise that is in my feet. Masia, hallelujah. Somebody say succession. I don't want to tell you you're about to succeed and don't give you the ammunition by which you have already succeeded. Tell your neighbor it's a finished work. It's a done deal. I'm just now allowing God to divulge how bad I really am. I'm just allowing God to unveil the power and the authority of his word. I'm just sitting on my side letting God unveil that blessing surely he will bless us you just letting God unveil glory to God that you are above only and not beneath if I didn't have no down days I wouldn't understand my succession of days Numbers 11 and 29. Got to close this today. And Moses said unto them, to him, he's talking to Eldad in Numbers. He said, envious thou for my sake. I want y'all to catch this. With God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. The word prophet there means an inspired man that can prophesy. Bless your name. I worry about people sometimes, Pastor James, who always feel that they need the divine office of the prophet to stir up the spirit in them. But Moses shows us something in Numbers that when God told him that I would take of your spirit and put it upon them, it says that the overflow reached some other men named Eldad and Medad. They were not prophets like unto Moses, but the word of faith was in their mouth. And they began to prophesy with Moses in the camp of 70 that surely he shall bless me. What are you saying, Brother Bishop? That your new friends are going to be inspired people that will prophesy with you and not against you. To every pastor and leader, God is sending you in a company of people that will prophesy with you and not challenge you. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor. 
say it's a new breed of prophecy coming in the land. In the land. Glory to God. Romans gives us a very contemporary relevance, Mother Hargrove. This is what Romans 3 say. Why is there getting ready to be no more cycles in your life? I'm going to tell you. Thank you for asking. Romans 3 says, what advantage then have the Jew? Or what profit is there in circumcision covenant? Much every way chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. What advantage do you have over your cycle? Because the word of God is not even in your mouth. What advantage do you have in the marketplace, Pastor James? Because the word is not even in your mouth. What advantage do you have in a courtroom? Because Jesus said, give no fault to what you should say. But in that very hour, the inspired word word of God would well up inside of you. What advantage, Elder Graham, do you have in Tuesday's interview? Is because the word of God is inspired. And because God rose up a prophet unto Moses, he said, Moses, my prophet, have I spoke to mouth to mouth? And we are the Jesus generation, which means my succession plan is greater works shall we do we shall cast out demons in his name we shall raise the dead in his name because we have a prophecy that is sealed with authority that whatsoever God said he is more than able to do somebody shall know my mouth no more cycles somebody shall no more two steps forward three steps back somebody shall no more missing prayer line no more not prophesying even to the wind send me my blessing watch this if succession means that God has covenanted with Israel that there would be a word from one generation to the next. And we are the eternal family of God in Christ Jesus. Then we have a word that has outlived time. Glory to God. Somebody say succession. Time only showed up to prove my word. Can we keep going? Romans 3 and 4. You might have read that, but I'll read it again. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying. A saying is what comes out of your mouth. Are you hearing me? You can't choose to be a victim when you have the inspired audacity of the Holy Spirit that guides, governs, and puts the word of God on the line. Are you hearing me? That means he'll make you say something that you had no control over saying. <sighs> and the more submissive you become, <laughs> the greater the word of God is going to become. I know you're scared. I know you want to throw in the towel. But there is an anointing that is innate in your belly that's getting ready to make a word come up that's going to make demons tremble. Look at your enemy and say, don't get scared now. You've been messing with me before I ever got here. You've been plotting. You've been planning. You've been setting pitfalls, traps, and snares before I ever got here. Don't get scared now. Glory to God. Look at here in my closing. Somebody grab. Look at here. I'll close this next week. 
Watch the power of God. Somebody say power in his word. God speaks something in Genesis 1. Mother, and he speaks, let there be. We see the formation of the cosmos in the let there be. But what we don't see, throwing the proper light on it in context, is in the specificities of the firmament, everything else the firmament would produce. What you saying, Bishop? I'll make it real easy for you to comprehend. You might get a word that might touch your ear and touch your heart, but you don't see all of the efficacy and the intricacy of the value of the word that calls succession in your life. See, and this is why we got to be able to serve God, not just with our spirit, but with our mind. Because as we begin to watch the word germinate in our life, we'll understand the connectivity from one cycle to the next cycle of God's word already being premeditated that he has let you live through the storm that Joseph, when you come up, you will have enough history that you will never want to go back down. What are you saying, Bishop? If God kept you then, you better believe when you get to your apex that he'll keep you then. Have you ever been blessed? And then you got scared. Have you ever been blessed? And you would say, God, how am I going to pay the mortgage? Have you ever been blessed? And you say, Lord, how are you going to keep this? But God said, I already blessed you. You are a son of the prophets. And every time it looks like there is no room for expansion, God said, look at the word. Look at the germination. It's been a setup. I know the devil tried to trap you, but I have already blessed you. I don't know who God is preaching to the dead, but you got a word that will outlast any devil. You got a word that is not even in your life. Somebody say, speak the word. No more cycle. No more. No more. I heard the songwriter say, I cried my last tear. When she cried, not today, yesterday, which means she thought about crying today. And then a word welled up in her that said, I cried my last tear. Somebody say, yesterday. When you hit the next reoccurring scene in your life, before you capitulate to it, tell that thing, I dealt with you my last day, yesterday. Before you go schizo and break down, you better tell your child, I had my last time dealing with this yesterday. You deal with it today, but I'm going to speak the word over your life that it is over yesterday. Oh, God, I feel not my shy. I feel this in the Holy Spirit. You want to be promiscuous? I'm speaking the word. No more. Your last layup for a hookup was yesterday. You want to get high? I'm speaking a word. You smoked your last joint yesterday. Oh, my shit. Because the word of my master of God is not even in your mouth. Succession means I am not going through today what I got the power to pronounce was over yesterday. Tell your neighbor, say it's in your mouth. It was over yesterday. I'm not taking this garbage into 2022. It was over yesterday.